As the Tea Party candidates tell it, the minimum wage is bad. So is financial regulation. Meanwhile, in our number two story, the kind of person they're fighting for, part of the people responsible for the country's financial mess, just struck a deal with the government and got a slap on the wrist. First, more fallout from the incident involving Joe Miller's security detail. They were handcuffing a journalist at a public school, as you remember. As we reported on this news hour, Tony Hopfinger of the Alaska Dispatch sought comment from Miller regarding a recent claim that Miller had been disciplined when he was a borough attorney in 2008. Miller now acknowledging he was disciplined for violating an ethics policy, but claims the situation was not as extreme as everyone made it out to be. In fact, the so-called event he was disciplined for, he says, happened over his lunch hour. And everyone knows if you break the law during your lunch hour, it doesn't really count. Conveniently, Miller skipped the candidate debate moderated by the Alaska Dispatch. Meanwhile, the Anchorage Daily News reporting that two of the guards from the security firm Drop Zone, who assisted in Mr. Hoffinger's arrest, were active duty soldiers. An Army spokesman in Alaska says the two did not have permission from their current chain of command to work for Drop Zone, and the Army's looking into the matter. No charges will be filed against Mr. Hoffinger, of course, because he didn't do anything wrong, or the security detail, which is curious. And if, if Miller was seeking public support from another Alaskan, she was too busy giving her seal of approval to senatorial candidate John Racy of West Virginia. Great news for Mr. Racy. Had Mrs. Palin not confused the state for another. Pennsylvania makes sense to sends GOP to DC to avoid PA economic disaster that will occur under Obama Pelosi cap and tax scheme. Workers need Racy. Here's the only <laughs> problem. Racy's running in West Virginia. Oops. Palin deleted the first tweet, first tweet. Now tweeting again, she referenced both West Virginia and Pennsylvania. Mrs. Palin then tweeted yet again, Mr. Racy will be a great candidate for pretty much, quote, all energy producing states. Oh, come on. It's the worst backpedal ever. Racy, who runs the family business, Greer Industries, a limestone and steel producer, believes he's just an old fashioned kind of guy. And by old fashioned, he means lobbying on behalf of the super rich. Well, I made my money the old-fashioned way. I inherited it, and I, I think that's a great thing to do, and I hope more people in this country have that opportunity as soon as we abolish uh, inheritance tax in this country. That's fantastic. Yeah, I'd like that opportunity, too, if I could just find a really rich grandma like Racy had. Racy was apparently seeking to give voice to a very small few. Last year, 99.75% of all Americans were not affected by the estate tax because they inherited less than $3.5 million. Racy's own worth, as the Charleston Daily Mail reports, could be as much as $79 million. The median income in West Virginia, just $38,000 a year. Which brings us to Angelo Mozilla, the CEO of Countrywide. He'd given deals to lawmakers of both parties with his so-called Friends of Angelo program. This week, justice was served for Mr. Mozilla, charged with insider trading and securities fraud. No trial, no jail time, just a fine. $67.5 million fine, which is, to most people, a lot of money. But for Mozilla, who reportedly made half a billion dollars presiding over a mortgage firm that created the subprime mess, it was just like a parking ticket. In the last three years of his reign alone, he made over $260 million even after he knew products they were selling were toxic, according to his own emails. Where do I get that deal? You steal $260 million from a bank, and the government is proud that they got 67 of it back. Well, he gets that deal in an environment where one political party is pushing so hard for deregulation that takes the cops off the street. Wall Street, in this case. And lets the robbers run the place. Tea Party for the rich! What a populist movement. 